In this video, we're going to talk about Elon Musk and NASA's terrifying new asteroid warning that changes everything. So before starting this video, like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel for future updates. Have you ever considered the possibility of an asteroid colliding with the Earth and causing catastrophic results? Whatever you want to say about it, some of the world's brightest minds are focused with how to help humanity survive with such a catastrophe. Elon Musk is one of them, and he is taking steps to ensure mankind survives such a disaster. NASA, on the other hand, has been thinking about the same issue and has even issued a warning about a probable cosmic collision with an asteroid. To avoid a situation like this, DARTS is a system that NASA is developing. What exactly are DARTS? How will NASA utilize it to prevent asteroids from colliding with the Earth? Join us as we explore how NASA's chief issues a dire warning about an asteroid crashing towards the Earth. Asteroids are a massive celestial objects that have been glorified in movies for wrecking havoc on the Earth. Is it true, however, that asteroids can strike the Earth? It's vital to understand a few things about asteroids before answering the question. Asteroids are also known as planetides or minor planets a rocky objects orbiting the sun that are too tiny to be turned planets. There are millions of asteroids ranging in size from a few feet to hundreds of miles wide, with mass less than the Earth's moon. Asteroids are mostly found in three areas of the solar system. The majority of the asteroids form a large ring between the Mars and the Jupiter's orbits. More than 200 asteroids larger than 60 miles 100 kilometers in diameter are found in this belt. Scientists believe that the asteroid's belt includes between 1 and 1,000. However, not every asteroid in the main belt is an asteroid. For example, there is a series that was formerly assumed to be an asteroid but was later shown to be dwarf planets. In the last decade, scientists have discovered a new kind of comets known as main belt comets, which are small stony bodies with tails. Some of the tails emerge when things collide with asteroids or asteroids disintegrate. It may be comets crashing into the sky or ancient objects that date back to the formation of our solar system 4.6 billion years ago. The creation of Jupiter prevented any planetary bodies from forming in the gap between the Mars and the Jupiter early on, leading the small objects that were present to smash and disintegrate into the asteroid picture we see today. Almost all the asteroids are evenly shaped, with a few of the largest such as Ceres that are frequently pitted or formed are roughly spherical. Vesta, for example, has a massive crater with a diameter of 285 miles, 460 kilometers. They rotate as asteroid in the elliptical orbit around the Sun, sometimes tumbling extremely haphazardly. A small companion moon is known to exist on more than 150 asteroids. Some even have two moons. Binary or double asteroids as well as triple asteroid systems exist in which two asteroids of nearly identical size orbit each other. Near-Earth asteroids or any other yeast orbits the Sun at a similar distance to Earth. These objects are divided into subcategories based on how the orbits of asteroids relate to the values. For example, a few asteroids have orbits that close the Earth's routes but only go between Earth and Mars. Although the Apollo asteroid have Earth-crossing orbits, they spend the majority of their time outside of the planet's path. Certain near-Earth asteroids are also classified as potentially hazardous asteroids, or PHA by astronomers. These rocks, which are larger than 500 feet or 140 meters across, are within 4.65 million miles of the Earth's orbit, or 7.48 million kilometers. Over 27,000 near-Earth asteroids have been found by scientists, only about 10,000 of them have diameters more than 500 feet. So do we really stand a chance of colliding with an asteroid? Yes, is the quick answer. Asteroids and comics have been crashing into Earth since its formation some 4.5 billion years ago. A quarter mile wide asteroid has the potential to cause a global catastrophe. According to researchers, such an impact would rise enough dust into the sky to effectively produce a nuclear winter, which would seriously damage agriculture around the planet. Smaller asteroids have the potential to destroy cities or cause destructive tsunamis. Space pebbles that are less than 82 feet 25 meters in diameter will very certainly burn up when they enter the Sandman sphere. An asteroid slammed into the atmosphere over Chelyabinsk, Russia in 2013, causing a shock wave that injured 1,200 people. 
when it hit the Earth's atmosphere, the space rocket was estimated to be 65 feet 20 meters broad. The question is, how can we defend the world against a fatal asteroid attack in the future? Or are we impotent and will we have to wait and see what harm an asteroid on a crash trajectory with the Earth causes? Elon Musk has discovered a way to turn Mars into a habitable planet. He believes that a portion of the humanity should relocate to Mars in the event of asteroid collision that wipes out humanity on Earth. He believes that a population of 1 million people on Mars might be self-sustaining. He is even constructing a spacecraft to transport his recruits to Mars. Musk's idea, however, necessitates billions of dollars in significant technological improvements in order to be realized. Musk's concept entails moving out of the way of an impending asteroid. As the asteroid approaches, NASA's solution takes the fight to it. Data or double asteroid redirection test is the solution. What is the DOD's procedure? It's straightforward, at least on paper, and will take place in the last September or early October 2020. Astronomers will quantify that change, assessing the success of the kinetic impact method of asteroid deflection. The 1,000 to 210 pound or 550 kilo dark to spacecraft will collide into a minor asteroid called Diamorphos, shifting the space rock's orbits around its larger partner Dimas. The Earth is in the crosshairs of a method NASA hopes to use against a rock in the future, because minor nudges can add up to a lot of changes later. This strategy works best when employed in preparation. Our robot, Data, launched from the Vandenberg Space Force Base in California late November 24 as the first space mission to test this or any other asteroid deflection technology. DART mission team members have checked out the spacecraft's many systems, including his principal scientific equipment, a camera dubbed Draco or Dimas Research into asteroid camera for optical navigation, while writing his SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. You will just have to put up with NASA's acronyms. Data is modestly sized spacecraft. The spacecraft's core is a box that's barely a meter broad on all sides, with two roll-out solar arrays that give it a width of roughly 12 meters or 40 feet. DART's electric propulsion technology creates a steady stream of charged ions to provide a modest but constant push. The DART spacecraft is equipped with a NASA Xenon Thruster Commercial Next Generation engine, which was developed by the agency's Glenn Research Center in the collaboration with the Aeroject Rocket Dyne. Next C is a solar-powered iron propulsion technology that could be used in spacecraft in the future. The probe employs 12 hydrazine thrusters to make its way toward the Dynamos Diamorphos Pier, not a DART's primary propulsion system. Nexi, on the other hand, will receive a key during the space test throughout the mission. To achieve the speed needed to exit the orbit, the spacecraft will cycle around the Earth many times using its electric propulsion. It will then go to Dyneema, perhaps passing by another asteroid known as 2001 CB21. The action will pick up significantly along the way. Draco will capture the first imagery they did him at them as Dark approaches its goal. Photos taken 30 days before impact will egg the probe in fine turning its route near Diamorphos, and a tiny Italian spacecraft called Leecher Cube will be launched 10 days before the impact to whiz past Diamorphos shortly after the crash to investigate its immediate consequences. Given that DART will collide into Amorphos at around 15,000 miles per hour, 24,000 kilometers per hour, such consequences could be extremely dramatic. The impact will occur approximately 6.8 million miles or 11 million kilometers from Earth, as it happened in my system. On their elliptical course around the Sun, the two asteroids come closest to our planet. That's not a coincidence. After the collision, astronomers can perform better telescopic studies of the damage because of the timing. The last time it came this near to Earth without missing was in 2003. It will happen again in 2016. DGM and Time Office monitoring will continue in the future, and not just from the FR. In a few years, European Space Agency wants to deploy HERA, a spacecraft that will travel to the Dyneema system to examine the damage DART caused. DART is particularly well suited to targets that did submerge and die amorphous. They are both little with Dimis measuring 780 meters, half a mile, and amorphous measuring only 160 meters, 525 feet, but they pass in front of one another. Earth's Perspective 
They appear to optical ground-based telescopes as a single point of light that varies in brightness. Demus, there are diamorphous circles, and the interval between those fluctuations will change once the dark hit. Furthermore, Dyneema and diamorphous do not get close enough to the dark to accidentally send them hurling into our world. The Department of Defense Initiative will cost $324.5 million. The development of the spacecraft costs $308 million. SpaceX will be paid $68.8 million for launch services, with $16.5 million set aside for operations and data analysis. At a speed of 6.6 .6 kilometers per second, data will collide with a diamorphous. Time Office's orbital period around Demis should vary from 11.9 to 11.8 hours, a difference of about 4.2 minutes. This will bring Demis and Dimorphism closer together. What do you think about this video? Do let us know down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video and want to hear from us again, be sure to hit the subscribe button before you go.